it's only here that I'm asking this question in my, uh, um, you know, my, my PPT, which do Chinese traders like most? And I already answered, you already answered that question also uh, by your own preference. Telegraphic transfer, which is TT. That's what they like. Many companies in China prefer those. And I'll give you the reasons uh, with this sign of, you know, business application. That's where we are now. Okay, let's start with um, business procedures. Bank receives the telegraph of remittance instruction sent by the foreign remitting bank. We already talked about that. Um, after checking that, the above instruction um, telegraph is correct and receiving the remittance, the bank will pay the remittance to the payee and contact, they will contact local branches to conduct this business. And they will be reached by the bank staff. I mean, the person who is going to be benefits, uh, you know, the beneficiary of this. Uh, what we need to know next is apart from what we've been explaining is, um, you know, the transactional steps, which is remain relating to identification, uh, which is seemingly simple, but very, very important because a lot of problem are, you know, happening here. The beneficiary name, let's say company, my company, my company, um, well, um, let's say my company, for example, that's what I know <laughs> most, it's named, um, um, do I forget its name? <laughs> uh, Wuhan Education Consulting Co. Um, Wuhan, Wuhan Education Consulting Co. Wuhan GPN Education Consulting Co. In fact, um, I, I, I do not really know the Chinese name, but it's Chinese and stuff like that. So it has Wuhan somewhere. That's my point, okay? <laughs> not just the company, but Wuhan. It's, it's, it's based in Wuhan. Then a lot of companies in China are taking the name of the company itself in the name. If the company is in Shanghai, there's Shanghai somewhere. If the company is in Wuhan, there's Wuhan somewhere. If it is here in Nanning, there's Nanning somewhere, basically. So foreigners, <clears throat> uh, you are among them, for example. Uh, I mean, foreigners, but not necessarily making any mistakes. They, they, they leave out some of the names. They say like GPN, Education uh, Consulting, and they, they think that Wuhan is just there, but it's not really important. If you do that, then you're not going to be effective in terms of payment, meaning that your payment will not reach the company. So what I mean is you have to be careful with the company name. The company name can also be long in China, in, in, in the U.S., for example, when you have HP, you don't have to write Hewlett Packard, the full name, just write HP, okay? But for the company in China, you write, uh, uh, let's say, what should be written, Lenovo or Lianxiang? Lianxiang, then you have to write that in PIN, then you have to know which one, okay? So uh, if there is something missing, then if they do it by the book, which is the case most of the time, then your, your payment is getting held off somewhere for probably three weeks instead of three days or three hours. The beneficiary address is like that also. So the, there's something there. The name, if it's too long and it doesn't match what you have in your country, go back, go to the other line somewhere and then you have to complete it. Don't abbreviate, okay? Because it doesn't work for some companies in China. Like, okay, well, banks, for example, they wouldn't accept it. Bank account number, that's very clear. You have to really, really know uh, what it is. Uh, bank name, um, it, it's even in need of some branch or whatever sometimes, which is not on my list here, but you have to know which branch it is you have to ask the local bank in there, the correspondent bank. Shift code. We talked about shift code already, which is very, very important. The currency used. 
you have to specify that. Are you using RNB or are you using dollars or whatever? Getting money back, as I said just now, is it might take three weeks. Um, and, uh, you know, you have to forget about, just like in other countries, I guess, you have to forget about the transaction fees if you get your money back, meaning that you lose money already. So you have to be careful with that. So uh, use of shift, we do not really need to elaborate on that because I think unless somebody is new there, um, just coming, uh, shift is a um, very important uh, system used uh, for security in this, and TT is basically using it, TT, um, telegraphic transfer, which is what we use in China, as we said. So the common, the most common payment term requested by the Chinese supplier, um, as we said, this TT, and um, I will go to the diagram here right away because it's the same as the slide where I have so many words. Now, this is an important part. <clears throat> you have the customer, probably you, um, who is buying things from China. If I jump a little bit here, Chinese suppliers are almost always require 30% deposit. They call it deposit, but you can also call it a down payment because a deposit basically is something that you can probably get back later for a certain reason. But um, you know, down payment, you never get it back. And most of the time, um, a kind of um, advanced payment to a manufacturer, even though advanced payment is very, very, it's a clear term that it's not going to be uh, going back. But some people might call it a deposit, but you have to be clear on that term. So 30% is what you are paying before manufacturing is starting. And before that, make sure that you have signed a contract very nicely. And before the contract, as I said before, you have the, uh, what is it, pro, pro forma. Well, probably I didn't say that before. Pro forma invoice, okay? Pro forma invoice is very important before signing a contract. And the contract is important before sending the 30% uh, advance payment to a manufacturer. They need this because some suppliers are still paying money for some material somewhere. Then the manufacturer is starting work. They might work with, uh, you know, sub suppliers can be A and B. Sub suppliers, not everything is from one factory, for example, but they buy materials, they buy several things, and they even buy some parts from somewhere. Of course, there is kind of standardization. <laughs> Um, and you also require to get a quality control thing, a quality inspection later. That's what we talk about. Then uh, payments to sub suppliers is done by the manufacturer. That's why they need this 30%. Uh, in negotiation, you probably suggest by yourself if you know their sub suppliers but probably not a good idea because it can put things, you know, uh, upside down. So pay them and they will do it. Um, usually people are, if they want to negotiate this 30%, then they mention that. Now, after this, there is a, what, um, a kind of a delivery from the sub supplier to the final manufacturing, um, the plants. And then delivery from this to this final manufacturing as well, if they need more materials from somewhere. And then the final, before, before everything is really final, the manufacturing, this is the time when you need a kind of quality control uh, inspection. You might hire a company in China or somewhere, if uh, your company is big enough, you might even send somebody from your country to China, do the inspection if that's allowed, and then you get that inspection, uh, you know, uh, certificate or whatever. 
And then you pay for the final uh, sum of the money, which is 70%. As you can see here, the final uh, payment is before the shipment or export of the goods you've been paying. That's, that's the first one, the first term. But the other terms, if you are lucky or know how to negotiate, is not going to be like that. And we'll see that very soon. So this payment, all payments here is before shipment, as you can see, all right? First, 30%. Second, 70%. It becomes, you know, uh, 100%. And then you have the shipment and the documents is going with that, the bill of lading, that's what I told you before, is sent to you by the supplier directly to you or probably with the shipment. And then export get goods, the importer get, get goods. You can clear the goods with the bill of lading here. So that is one for uh, let's say TT, for example, in practice, uh, that's one term, that's one term, okay? So typical requirements from Chinese suppliers. The reason why you need to know this is you have to have some reference because if you are doing business with Chinese suppliers and uh, they are asking you 30% and you think they are too demanding, that's not the right way to go. If that's what you think, then you are losing their confidence, you are losing their, their, their trust, and they will not do business with you. So you know exactly how much. But knowing this, you are not going to pay 40%, okay? If they are asking 40%, you have a reference like, you know, with, with a very, very high confidence saying, oh, I can just pay 30% with no fear. So that's where it is then uh, basically it's like this, but it's possible to go with the other um, terms or the other negotiation uh, possibility. As you can see here, it's more or less the same diagram, but there's something changing. I will go right to the change. Uh, you have, you also have everything here, the 30% deposit, or advance payment, let's not call it deposit, advance payment to a manufacturer. Uh, the reason why some people call it deposit is if there's something wrong, you're supposed to get this 30% back or some part of the money. But uh, basically it should go on, um, the transaction should go on because there are some people are subcontracting getting uh, some materials from somewhere else and they are paying those people, you're not going to just, just uh, get uh, you know, uh, a refund just easily. That's why we need to specify before, that's part of the, the things I will tell you after, you need to really know how to describe what kind of item you are in need of and they will manufacture it. So the difference here is before, we had shipment here after paying 70%. But here, what do you see? You see the shipment before the final payment, okay? Shipment, you have the goods on the way before you pay the 70%. Of course, there, were, there are some ways to control you, not to stop that kind of, uh, you know, uh, obligation with the documents, but the document is sent to you after, after the 70%, because if the document is sent before the 70% is paid, you still have some kind of chance to, to, to run away or whatever. I, I refer to that. Not everybody is crooked and stuff. Not everyone is doing that, but um, it's always important to refer to safety. So the document is sent after that, and then you can clear the goods from custom. All right, better still, better still, oops. So why is it 
why is it the last one here is better? That's the question we have here. Why is it the why is it good? The buyer knows the goods have been shipped out before paying the remainder. That's what we have for the 70% being paid after shipment. Okay. The supplier knows that the buyer can only take possession of the goods after original bill of lading has been sent. That's also is the good thing here. So, you know, as, as an importer, you know that the goods are on the way and you get prepared for payment, but the buyer itself is not really, is not afraid yet because you don't have the goods yet unless the, the, the bill of lading is with you. So it's still there somewhere. So both of you are excited and having some security level, even though not very, I mean, not the same. Uh, can you negotiate this term if you insist on it from the very start? And if your suppliers are motivated to work with you by means of anything, um, you know, probably yes. Uh, by means of anything I said, you have some kind of, uh, you know, relationship in China. Uh, probably you have been here, um, you know, visiting their plants. You have some companies that you know and they know too or whatever or you are a bigger company big company are tr more trustworthy than small ones sometimes in business small ones can be closed tomorrow and you never see them but big ones it's 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 a hard it's a long process to get closed down and the guarantee i mean some kind of security is not only for the company but probably even given by the government and stuff like that so that's, um, and contact the commercial department of your bank, tell them that you need to wire example, some certain amount of money, 25,000 to the company in China, and they will generally give you a form to fill out. So all these are included. So uh, the important tips, make sure to avoid misspelling, which might cause the payment instruction to be a limbo, as I said before, you will need to write the company name in English, not in Chinese, but you have to be careful. Sometimes it is in PIN, PIN, not in English, okay? So you have to care about it. Don't try to do your own translation job, even if your written Chinese is excellent, um, find, Somewhere like translation companies are, they have authentication uh, thing. I know that because I have a translation company. I'm not advertising my company, but any, any document we translate, there's uh, special stamps for everything from the government, this number. There are a lot of things that they can verify. So if you just use any stamp, then at last it will be rejected. It has to match exactly the English name under uh, what it, it is registered in the seller's bank records. If the company name is too long, keep writing in the address uh, field. Um, that's what I said before. Like this can be an example, Guangdong Electronics Factory Co. Limited. Probably, as I said, if you compare this with with uh, let's say HP, just write HP. In, in China, names of people are short. Foreign names are very long. But when it comes to companies, name of companies are long. So it, when, when, when you are feeling something abroad, you might have problem. But if this is the case, you can even go down here anywhere make sure that you have everything don't abbreviate okay even co if you write co basically it's with uh you know a dot after here if you have that write the dot everything so that's what you need to know i mean just now um so is there any possibility of a better payment terms I, I, I don't know, like me, I, I can stay here forever, <laughs> but I don't know the timing. For... 
How about tomorrow? Because if you have, I don't know if you have too many contents tomorrow. Of course, it's still our you know program to you know this you part. But um, anyway, uh, we are. I'm sorry, we are discussing the time because now it should be uh, finished. But if you don't mind, I will finish this and the case study. Starting from the case study, we'll do that tomorrow. Okay, this will not take long. Okay, just two slides. <laughs> now, um, the question we have, is there any other possible or better payment terms uh, under the TT in China? Because we talked about the 30% and 70% and the 70% is paid before you know, shipment. The other one is, yeah, 30% and the 70%, but the 70% of balance is paid, uh, you know, uh, after shipment. Is there any other? That's the question. There are various ways you might be able to negotiate payment terms of some, um, you know, all of them, the amount after the shipment um, is to be considered. Um, you can, that can be easier if for the following, your company is well-established and famous. Well, that's very logical. If you are Apple, Disney, um, as I said before, um, you know, Lenovo or whatever, well, Lenovo is in China, but uh, foreign companies in your country, they, 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 they buy do it. <laughs> I'm saying buy do because we say Google. We Google it, they buy do it, and it's found somewhere. Uh, if, if, if they don't know, find some ways to, to let them know, okay? Your company is famous. Why? Prove that <clears throat> in your negotiation <clears throat> by means of documentation, by means of reference to the website, by means of talking to people, giving a reference. Like you can call this person and he will tell you about it. Um, or agency in China. Some agencies are a lot better uh, knowing different companies in the world than a company. You, 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 you include that agency, you pay a little um, fees and that agency might help you, um, you know, um, showing how, 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 you know, the reputation of the company that you are having that the agency is, you know, aware of and like that. Second, you arrange financing for suppliers. As buyers, if you have relatively strong financial guarantees and you purchase more than $1 million a year, you can work with a company, a bank department, um, specializing in trade insurance solutions. Uh, your supplier gets the cash when you need it and your account is deb debited uh, months later. Um, so you arrange the financing of the suppliers uh, even I talked about the the the, the um, uh, what is it subcontractors before. Uh, you can even relate to that. Apart from what we're saying here, you can even talk about it. Like I'm gonna pay for the materials. I'm gonna pay for this and that. But you can before you know before you can do that. You have to know their process of manufacturing. So um, do research, ask people, ask some agency, and then you know what their problem is during their operations. And then you kind of give a suggestion to minimize their um, kind of, uh, you know, the, the budget needed for certain operation. And then you do that. Uh, that can help them decide on when you are paying for 70%, the last part. That's because some people, business persons in one week, they can make triple the money. <clears throat> so it's not a problem if you pay a little percentage for a supplier somewhere, uh, rather than giving up this opportunity to use your money for one week and you have to pay before delivery. Um, that's, that's the thing. So you calculate your advantage and when it works then you go with it you just need to know how to communicate it uh, next you have a buying office in china 
If you have a buying office in China, having a strong presence in the country, uh, it, it helps because they can even sue you. <laughs> they, once they know that you have an office in China or whatever, um, then uh, if you do something wrong, because trust basically is relating to whether somebody is going to cheat on you or not. So uh, if you have an office in China, you cannot cheat. So they can accept different terms then um, because the legal aspect of the transaction is playing a role somewhere. There is security involved in staff, then you can also tap on that. Um, so if you don't have an office, probably you have a friend who is having an office or whatever. Everything can be used because in China, there is what we call guanxi relationship is important. If you have relationship with others in business, it's easier. If you have relationship with the supplier here and there, it's easy. So there are many types of relationship. You have to tap on that. Um, you are a great negotiator is also important. Negotiation, you have to, you know, uh, kind of uh, do research here and there and, um, you know, uh, know what is important for you, but is not very important for them. You ask them that, and in exchange for what is important for you, probably you get a nice deal. So those are in here. As you can see, if you are lucky, then you can pay 20% instead of 30% for the first payment. And then you pay 40% before shipment, okay? Um, because in that case, you can still use some money, um, you know, 10% from somewhere. And then the 40% is at the very last, um, that's the third pay payment. It's even after getting the goods, okay? After getting the goods, uh, you even get the bill of lading, everything. But because you are a good negotiator, you get this deal, it's possible. So you refer to these free terms and then you do business with China. So it's really, really, um, I haven't talked about everything. Tomorrow we, will, uh, we have a lot of things to talk about. Uh, please don't miss the opportunity if you can be online. Um, so there are a lot of things, exciting things you can learn from doing business with Chinese. And the thing is, some people have uh, prejudgment. Chinese suppliers are, um, you know, the Guanxi thing is very important, as I said. Once you are dealing with them today, tomorrow, they trust you, okay? They trust you. They even can tell you in some items, they say, okay, this is a copy. This is the Janan product. So, a copy here is like, you know, in, 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 in the world, it's not like a fake product. It's a cop probably near to, let's say, I'm not even saying copy, but secondhand. Secondhand in China is like a brand new, okay? So if they say this is a secondhand, this is new, you never know. But they tell you this is a secondhand and this is their brand new one. Why they say that? Because you have already doing, start doing business with them. So there is misconception like, oh, man, you know, in China, this and China, that. Um, if you know how to do business with them, it's really, really, and they take very small margin, very small margin. That's why the cheap things in China is not only because of cheap labor. It's because of small margin. They rely on Many, many orders, that's what they like. Um, in the US or somewhere, they rely on probably, uh, you know, uh, I don't need so many orders, but with one or two, I get a lot of money. That's what a lot of people do. It's not here in China. So uh, you need to know, it's the right thing that you are. And I think uh, you will learn more. This will uh, motivate you to do research by yourself. Tomorrow we start with a case study for this whole thing. Um, I uh, thank you very much for today. Uh, Let's check if we have some questions. Orange. Yes, questions. Orange.
Lawrence. Uh, we should not. Where can we have?